In this video, I want to show you how I configure my Galaxy S22 Ultra. Most of the settings that I mentioned in this video will apply to any other Samsung device running One UI. So go ahead and grab a seat and let's get started. Starting on with the lock screen here, I've customized the layout of it with the Lockstar Good Lock module to move the music widget to be right above the fingerprint scanner here. That makes controlling my music much easier when I'm holding my phone with one hand. And for the shortcuts on the bottom here, I have the flashlight and camera module, um, camera app configured. Now before I jump into the specific settings, I want to talk about two things that I've done on my phone or configure my phone here to make my navigation experience much better on a large device like this. The first is this quick tools menu here that comes up whenever I swipe downward from either the left hand side or the right hand side here. And you can see it allows me to do some quick actions here like controlling the media, controlling the screen brightness here, or even pull down the notification shade. I can do all of this with just one hand. So this makes using a device this large here pretty effective. And this is made possible by the One Hand Operation Plus Good Lock module that is available on the Galaxy Store. And in my opinion, this makes using a big device like this a bit more manageable as this feels more intuitive than the One Hand Operation mode that Samsung ships with One UI, which basically makes the screen smaller. This module here is pretty customizable and this is how I've configured it. The translucent bars on both sides here that are in blue here denote where I can activate the gestures. And as you can see in the bottom left corner here, I left it empty because that's where I have the edge panels configured. So for me personally, 99% of the time I'm using the edge panel to use this calculator panel here. This is a third party app from the Galaxy Store at, and at its core, it's just a simple calculator. I can do like mathematic operations here directly. Or what makes it really handy is that I can access this calculator basically anywhere. So I'm on the home screen, I can just swipe left here and I can access the calculator. And there's this history panel here, which allows me to see any past calculations that I've made. So this is really handy. And really best part here is that I can really just use that with just one hand. And besides that, I also have this second tool here, which is a second app here that allows me to have a bunch of apps like this compass. And I also can have this surface level. And I can also have this, I think this ruler here is pretty cool also. But anyways, jumping into the home screen setup here, I have a pretty minimalist setup going along here. As you can see, I only have three rows of apps here. And on a left swipe, I'm brought into the Google Discover page. So that allows me to see my Google feed and all the news that is, I'm being recommended. One thing to note here is that I've primarily used my phone with my left hand. That's why I have the most used app staggered on the left corner here. One particular app that I want to point out here is the one with the star icon and the smiley face here. This is Samsung secure folder and it's like a sandbox environment completely separate from the rest of the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and log in right here. So I use it primarily for my financial applications to add another level of security as I can only access this folder with a password that is separate from the biometric unlock that I have on the lock screen. So if someone is able to get into my phone if they got my password or my pin code, they're not able to get into this folder because this is a completely different password. Another app that I rely on a lot is Sesame Shortcuts. This is, in my opinion, the closest thing to Spotlight Search for iOS on Android. This app is really powerful as it not only allows me to launch applications directly by just searching onto it, but it also gives me direct access to the shortcuts exposed from all my applications. So for example, if I click on, if I type on search here, it'll list all the applications that exposes a search kind of shortcut available. But most of the time, I'm using it as a glorified Google search box as it provides me suggestions as I'm typing. And this is the same one that I would see as I'm typing on Google. But yeah, that's how my home screen is kind of configured. I don't have any kind of widgets and I even hide the clock on the top corner here because I want to reduce the clutter. And also because I'm wearing a smartwatch like 24 hours a day and I view all the glanceable information like the time or even the date or even the weather here directly from my smartwatch. Moving on to the app screen here, I've managed to consolidate it to a single page by using a combination of folders and hiding apps that I don't really use. And the folder categories that you see here is something that I've been refining over the years. And these categories have worked really well for me to keep my apps organized. For example, this smart home folder here has all the apps that I use to connect to my smart home devices. And this media folder here has all the apps that I use to consume visual and auditory media. And for the apps that are not in folders are the ones that I commonly use like the Play Store or the Google Maps app. Or in some cases, apps that I want to force myself to use like Paprika Tree or the Expert Raw app. 
All right, before I dive into the phone settings, let me go ahead and go into the home screen settings here to show you what I have specifically toggled. My home screen grid is set to five by six and my app screen grid is set to four by seven. So this is a specific grid that requires using the um, Good Lock Home Up module as the default grid does not have this four by seven option. And for the folder grid here, I have set it to four by four. So this allows me to see more condensers of apps when I open a folder. And as mentioned, I have enabled or I've used the Google Discover versus Samsung Free as the media page on the left-hand side of the home screen. And this is where I hide my apps here. So these are the apps that I hide. So things like the settings or even the Samsung Free or even things I don't want to use, I hide the applications through this, act, this um, setting here. And moving on to the list here, I have set the app icon badge to show a dot because I don't really need to know what the number of notifications I have on the app. I just need to know that that app has a notification. And going back here, I have the swipe down for notification panel enabled. And basically that allows me to basically swipe down from anywhere to view my notifications panel. And in terms of wallpapers that I use on my home screen and lock screen, I get them from these two apps, Backdrops and Amulet Walls. I firstly prefer Amulet Walls a little bit more because I prefer using pitch black wallpapers as it helps conserve battery, especially on my home screen. This is because the black pixels on AMOLED screens don't light up and that helps to conserve the battery if those pixels are not lighting up. All right, moving on to the settings app here, I'm gonna walk you through all the important settings that I have configured for my phone to make it work the way that I want to. All right, starting on with the sounds and vibration section here, I'm gonna navigate down to the system sound slash vibrate control. I have the touch interactions and screen lock slash unlock disabled. So what this means is that this prevents or disables the annoying touch sounds that happen whenever I click the UI like this. So these two disables that, I don't like that sound. All right, next time I'm gonna jump into the notification section here. I turn on the um, notification pop-up style to be detailed so I can view more information at a glance. And I also have do not disturb turned on with this schedule basically weekdays at night, I'm trying to sleep. I don't want to be disturbed by any notifications. And in the advanced settings here, I have the show battery percentage off. That's because I don't need to micromanage my battery life. And I also have floating notifications turned off because I don't really like that and I'm not a big fan of it. And going back um, to the main menu here, I'm gonna go into the display settings. I have dark mode turned on to sunset to sunrise and turning on a schedule. So during the night, it goes in the dark mode and during the day, it's like a light mode here. As for other settings, I have adaptive brightness turned on. This is basically just a fancy way to say that I have enabled auto screen brightness. And for motion smoothness here, I have turned on adaptive. So that enables me to take advantage of this LTPO display on this S22 Ultra that dynamically adjusts the screen refresh rate from 1 hertz to 120 hertz to have that buttery smooth scrolling. And I have this eye comfort shield um, turned on and I set it to custom to enable this super yellow color temperature from sunset to sunrise. This basically adds this yellow tint on the screen at night, so it limits my exposure to blue light at night so I can sleep well better. And for the screen mode here, I have it set to natural, it's set, by, it's set to vivid by default, and basically natural prevents the super oversaturated colors that Samsung has by default. And for the font style and size, I have it set to this Samsung Sans font, which I downloaded from the Galaxy Store. I feel that this font is a bit more refined than the default fonts that are available. And going back to the actual screen zoom, I have it to zoom out to the max so I can see more content. And for the screen resolution, I have it set to WKHD+, because why not? This phone supports this resolution, and I might as well take advantage of it. And for my screen timeout, I usually have it set to one minute, but for the purposes of this video, I have it set to five minutes so that my screen doesn't time out when I'm shooting this video. And as mentioned earlier, I have edge panels turned on. I have the calculator and tools panel or tools app configured. And the last setting that I have configured is for the navigation bar. I have the swipe gestures turned on and specifically I have the gesture hint turned off. So by default, it turns on the gesture hint and it has this bar in the bottom. But for me in particular, I'm very used to this gesture navigation so I don't have that. And I know basically to drag in the bottom to basically um, engage the gestures. So yeah, those are the settings that I have for my display. 
I'm going to skip over the wallpaper themes and home screen sections and jump right into the lock screen section. The first thing is that I have the always on display turned on as this schedule here. So it's basically throughout the day so that I can view any kind of um, notifications or stuff when my phone is on my desk. And going back on the notifications section here specifically, I have the notifications on the lock screen set to details versus icons only. So that shows me more information. And specifically for the notifications to show, I have it set to only show alert notifications only. So that only shows me a very curated list. So if I have a notification that is a silent notification, I don't see it on my lock screen. So going back into the main settings here, I'm gonna skip through these two sections or these two blocks here, as there really isn't anything to customize here and jump right into the advanced features. So I have enabled the call and text on other devices. This basically allows me to make phone calls from my Galaxy Watch 4 with my phone number that is on this phone, as long as my um, phone and watch are connected onto the same Wi-Fi network. So if I open the phone app on my um, watch here, I can use the same phone number that I have here, even though that this does not support cellular support. That's pretty cool settings here. And for the S Pen settings here, I'm gonna skip through it today as I'll probably do a deep dive into these settings here once I get more custom with the S Pen on the S22 Ultra. So stay tuned for that. So going back here in the motion and gestures um, section, I have everything turned on. All these settings are pretty handy to have, especially this alert when phone get picked up. Setting this basically um, buzzes or vibrates the phone whenever I pick it up when the phone has a missed call or a message that is pending. Going back here, I have Bixby Routines turned on. So in case you don't know what Bixby Routines is, it's basically similar to Tasker, the automation app, but built right into one UI here. So I have set up some basic automation or workflows in a the sense there, like this one that says battery at night. Uh, basically, if I'm sleeping, it turns on the power saving mode. And also there's this one here where I, if I turn on apps like Chrome or like Gallery or like YouTube or any kind of media apps, I turn on auto rotation so that I can view things in landscape mode. But going back to the settings here, the last thing I have configured is in the developer options. If you don't see the developer options in your settings, you'll need to go into the about phone software information and click on the build number seven times and then it'll pop up the developer options. But in the developer options settings here under the drawing section, let me find the drawing section here. The drawing section, I have the window transition and animator scale turned down to 0.5x. This basically makes the animations and UI feel a bit more snappy. But yeah, that's all the important settings I have configured on my S22 Ultra. I hope this video gives you a bit more context on how I set up my Android phone. If you have any questions about any of the settings that I use or even questions about the S22 Ultra, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you on that. If you want to see a detailed list of all the apps that I have on my phone, I'll leave a link to a video that I made a while back where I talked about all the apps that I have installed on my Android phone and that list of apps mentioned in that video is still identical to the list of apps that I use to date. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and I'll be sure to get you more videos about tech and lifestyle and I hope to see you very soon in the next video.